one of the things that I want you to know about cinema media arts is that we're interested in looking at the moving image from all different um, perspectives, um, practitioners, theorists, um, we're heavy focus on our BFA programs on making. Um, we also have some incredible um, scholars in film studies. So if you're interested in the moving image, if you're interested in the history of the moving image or its future, um, there's probably a program for you here. Um, last year, we celebrated our 50th year anniversary. And uh, what's interesting about that too is that we're the first university-based film school in Canada and I still think the best. Um, so there's a lot of history here. And, um, and uh, at the same time, we're, we've been constantly growing and innovating. So we, um, we started in, in 1969, opening the first um, um, Department of Cinema and Media Arts, the film department at that time. Um, new programs, new MFAs, uh, the first standalone BFA in screenwriting. Um, and in 2017, a new BFA in media arts. So we're constantly adding to um, our offerings in response to changes in industry and, and changes in, um, in, uh, in the culture. One of the great things about studying in Toronto is uh, that we're really at the heart of cinema and media arts. Um, we have incredible festivals here, artist-run centers, galleries, um, industries. Um, so if you're thinking about studying uh, film and media, uh, this is the place to do it. We have four um, undergraduate degree areas, um, a BFA in production, a BFA in screenwriting, a BFA in media arts, and a BA in cinema and media studies. So I'm just gonna quickly run through. I don't want to take a lot of your time here because I imagine you'll have more time for questions, but I do wanna give you a bit of an overview to, uh, to help us along. So our BFA in film production offers a comprehensive curriculum in all aspects of filmmaking. Um, we have um, um, incredible um, technical instruction, but also um, a very clear focus on creativity and, uh, and, and storytelling. Um, you also, as a, as a production student, would be um, um, taking classes with screenwriters, uh, you're taking classes in cinema and media studies. So uh, we're really interested in, in the breadth of your experience and, um, and helping you to create very strong stories. Um, industry standard production and post-production facilities. Um, we've already heard a little bit from Laura about CineSiege, but we have a showcase of incredible student films. Um, in the film production um, um, degree, um, students focus on fiction, documentary, alternative cinema, and um, um, we have a production faculty member here, Manfred Becker, who's going to be talking, um, who's going to talk a little bit more about uh, the film production process uh, for admission in particular. Um, want to talk quickly about screenwriting. Um, the BFA in screenwriting is the only standalone program uh, for, uh, for screenwriting in the country. And we're very, very excited um, um, to, be, to be growing this program. Um, what was considered to be one of the best film programs in North America um, by Movie Maker Magazine. Classes are small. Uh, screenwriters work closely alongside film production students. And um, it's really a unique opportunity. You can also, as a screenwriting student, um, branch out into the creative writing program and take some of those courses as well. Our new BFA program uh, in media arts, um, we're particularly focusing this on um, those kinds of uh, moving images experiences that are outside of single channel cinema. So uh, thinking about um, multi-screen storytelling, immersive digital technologies, gaming, interactive media. So these are the place for sort of new stories for new screens. Um, and uh, we also have a, have a uh, producing um, area in that as well. So we have um, um, colleagues from um, uh, media arts here to discuss that program with you and the requirements for admission. Some great facilities for our new media arts program, beta space. We're not in it now, we're missing it, but some students are back um, and, and, uh, and accessing equipment there. Um, um, and uh, it's a, we've got some dedicated spaces for media arts students. Our BA in Cinema and Media Studies is really renowned. We have um, focus on media, cinema and media studies from the undergraduate right up to the doctoral level. Um, and these courses are taught by uh, award-winning faculty um, who are very interested in theorizing, thinking about media criticism, um, the history of cinema and, um, and, and the form itself. Um, 
students develop knowledge in genre authorship, national, transnational cinemas, cultural theory, and the placements are really interesting, um, producing, marketing, the business of film, and curating and film festival programming. Um, great library facilities. You probably, uh, um, yeah, it doesn't even look like a library anywhere. Uh, we've got an amazing sound and moving image library, uh, amazing um, uh, cinemas. We've got great industry connections. Um, and one I'm just gonna point out is the industry support of Cine Cinespace uh, Film Studios and the Mercopolis family who support uh, CineSiege. Um, but also um, have uh, supported the faculty um, through um, um, through use of the of uh, the AMPD Cinespace Studio, so that we can uh, have access to those studio spaces. Um, I thought I had another slide there. Anyway, there's there's some very cool spaces inside Cinespace um, and some research facilities there as well. Uh, the department is committed to diversity, uh, committed to um, gender equality, uh, equity, and uh, we have a new plan uh, specifically addressing anti-Black racism and um, have been uh, recommitting ourselves to thinking about uh, what uh, equity means in the context of our program and to making our program um, actively anti-racist, uh, anti-sexist, and, um, and uh, a place for everyone. So I think I'm going to end there and then and introduce my colleagues who can tell you a little bit about their areas. And I guess we'd probably feel free to also start putting your questions in the chat and we'll try to answer everything we can about um, about our programs and how to get in. So maybe I'll start with um, actually I'll, I'll introduce everybody and then you can kind of hand off to each other. Um, so I, I'll go based on my screen. Um, I've um, um, I guess Mary Mary Bunch is next on my screen. Um, and Mary Bunch is a Canada Research Chair, and you can give your title of where it is, uh, of, um, is it Critical Disability Studies? It's Vision, Disability Studies, and the Arts. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And Mary is both in the Cinema and Media Studies areas and Media Arts. Um, our other panelists joining is Manfred Becker, who is uh, one of our production faculty and also graduate program director. So it's a bit early for that, but uh, uh, Manfred has uh, been a longstanding um, uh, instructor in our film production program and, um, uh, and uh, can answer those questions. And then um, I've lost Tan's picture. Tan, are you still there? I am. Um, I had to sign in and sign out again. So oh, okay. Oh no, I see you there. Oh, Tana yeah. Chen, uh, and uh, is a fantastic uh, faculty member in media arts, and uh, and is available to uh, to talk about media arts. And um, is Patricio still here? Okay, yes, I'm I here. And uh, Patricio de Villa, um, also a, um, you're a, a research chair in like a, is it VISTA research chair? Uh, VISTA, yeah, strategic hire, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, does um, um, amazing work um, with that research area looking at uh, in vision science, uh, but of course uh, thinking about how that applies to, to cinema and is also the um, area head for our media arts program. So these are fantastic resources uh, for you here today. And um, maybe we could start off with you, Manfred, just to talk a little bit about yourself and about uh, the film production program. Sure. Hi, I'm Manfred. So I was a part-time teacher since 2005 at York. And I also uh, taught at Ryerson Seneca in Humber. And then I chose York to be my home, my creative home, which says something. I've been around. And I also did my PhD there. I'll talk a little bit about film production and you can find a lot of details on the website. So I'm not gonna kind of run down all the, the, the different aspects, but what I wanna emphasize is that we have a holistic view with hands-on practice and theory approaches. So we combine technical skills with the creativity of film as a vehicle for change making and self-expression. And it will offer you an expansive view of visual storytelling traditions, including cinema, television, as well as current trends on the internet and hybrid forms. In year one and two, you build a solid, it's a four year program. So in year one and two, you build a solid foundation with the introduction to filmmaking, camera work, sound recording, technical aspects, video production, screenwriting essentials, and production planning. So imagine in the first year, you get to do your own film on a shot on a 16 millimeter camera, like the old fashioned way. 
using celluloid and you get to do a first documentary and a fiction and then in year two you do one of each so there is a long uh, tradition of hands-on production and these pieces you build are not just there to fulfill an assignment you build your own demo reels because when you leave university we want you to work we want you to be able to land a job and we see us about part of our responsibility. So, so you, you get to have industry contacts. And this way you hold onto these first works you do as your evolution of, as a, as a filmmaker. So do that, don't just think of it as, oh, I have to do this assignment for class so-and-so. You also get to understand cinema history in a culture and economic context. So theory courses empower you to develop your ability to not only make movies, but also think and talk and write about them and to understand the, the historical and theoretical framework. And then in year three, you do more, you specialize, you either specialize in fiction, documentary or experimental film, and you get in-depth training as a director, cinematographer, sound recorder, production manager, or picture and sound editor. I'm a picture editor for was for a long time so that's kind of my my home turf and we have like three different layers and the good thing about editors is you always find work so it certainly beats flipping hamburgers or being a barista is if you can do editing work on commercial productions and do then continue your own work at night and on weekends and a good editor can make enough money to work for six months or four months of the year and then do their own thing so that's something i've been i've been nurturing for many years at, at, um, at York. Uh, we have other courses like directing actors for the screen, fiction, um, cinematography for directors, production design, producing independent film. Caitlin already brought up Cinespace. That's a huge studio. It's a big deal. All the Hollywood studios are coming here now to shoot their movies. Handmaid's Tale is shot there. And we have two studios, which you can use for your own productions. What's really important is that you take collaboration seriously. You're gonna meet people for the first time in year one and you will be with them for four years. And when you leave, there will be your buddies to create strength in numbers. We have a few um, former students who are now um, real makers in the industry, the Mats, Miller and Johnson. They're the team behind the Dirties and Operation Avalanche who are very successful fe feature films. And they now teach at York and they continue to be a creative team. And you have an opportunity to work with all kinds of other students, including theater, design or music and work with professional actor actors. We have a field placement program where you gain real workplace experience for the summer and earn the, the course credit. And we have field courses like learning uh, from LA where you go to Los Angeles and explore the histories, myths and contradictions of the first modern media city. If you're interested in doing an education degree, there's a combined studies program. So you can walk away with a bachelor of education and a BA or BFA and CMA within five years. You got access to technology. We have master classes. One of our alumni is Matt Lloyd, who's now the director of photography of Spider-Man. That's pretty good from York to Spider-Man. And he's come and talked to people. And this cine space was full of students trying to figure out how you get from York to Spider-Man. Um, there are other aspects will prepare you for, uh, you can be a director in film and television, director of photography, art direction, producing, production manager. If you, you go on the website, there's a whole list of alumni, screenwriters, camera technicians, film editors, et cetera, et cetera. We have a list of notable alumni. There are people who have gone places and never look back because as I said early, this isn't about just four years. It's about preparing you for a career in filmmaking because film is, is um, a term being used often, but to make a living in a very competitive world, is not easy. And that's what we're there for to, to help you with because all faculty are practicing filmmakers. I just say a couple of quick things for your application. Uh, you want to put um, a one paragraph proposal for a short film, either documentary or fiction film in your in your application, make it no budget. So don't do um, um, uh, a, a, a big, big super production when which you can't do yet. Stay small, but stay smart. 
describe your favorite filmmaker and director and a creative project which really influenced you. And don't forget Canadians are James Cameron, Denis Villeneuve, David Cronenberg. So it's always good to have some knowledge on, on Canadian cinema. And submit a five minute video. Don't, don't go any longer. You can be a videographer or writer or editor on it. But you can also submit photographs of art or visual pieces. And then um, one thing I would strongly suggest is avoid demo reels cut to music because that doesn't really give us a sense of who you are. You might be a good editor, but try to be clear in when you put your own handwriting forward, your own vision of something. It could be flawed. It's you and nobody else could have done this. And if all works out, you get to come to campus and have a Zoom interview. And then our acceptance is based on three elements, portfolio, statement, and the interview. So good luck. I'll pass it on to Mary. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Mary Bunch, as, as Caitlin had mentioned. Um, I'm, I'm primarily situated in the Media Studies program. I also um, work in the Media Arts program, but I won't address that because we have two people, key people, the two key people from Media Arts here with us, and they will talk about that. Um, I'll talk about um, the opportunities and the joy of taking media taking the media studies degree and you know I, I it, it's a long time ago but I remember being in high school and thinking about what I was going to do and where I was going to go to university in the 1980s and um, <laughs> York was like for anyone who wanted to do fine arts filmmaking theater like everybody was everybody wanted to go to York and it was so competitive to get in um, uh, it was so exciting. And myself, I had parents who were like, take a practical degree. You'll never get a job if you go into the arts. Even though I love the arts, I was like, oh my God, I took psychology. And I thought, this is, this is, this is what I need to do if I want to have a job. And, uh, you know, I am so lucky that I somehow, through some roundabout process of making all the right decisions after that decision, landed myself in the cinema and media arts department after all. So, but I just want to say, for those of you who are worried about that, whether you're interested in being a maker or doing studies, and I mean, who does not want to go to classes to watch films, talk about them, to watch, to see media arts, virtual reality, augmented reality, learn how to make that, learn how to study, like learn how to analyze that and think about that. Um, not only is it super fun, obviously super fun, but think about how many screens and moving images you are looking at every day, all day long. Like, is there gonna be jobs for you? Well, you know, it's an uncertain world, but we are pretty sure that cinema, media arts, screen-based storytelling on phones, on computers, on TVs, on movie screens, on screens made of smoke, in the park or a mist that you can walk through. We have one of those screens actually. One of the, some of the researchers, Caitlin um, has one of those screens. Like that stuff is here to stay. Like there is no doubt. Um, so I never went and, you know, had that really fun undergrad experience that you guys have available to you. Um, but I'm like, it is not an impractical decision to go and to do this. I really, really strongly feel that. So in, the stream that I'm in, which is where we're learning how to critique and understand cinema and media arts. Um, my colleagues teach courses like, you know, there's introductory courses where you look at the history of filmmaking, you learn how to, how to analyze all the different aspects of, of, of cinema or of a media arts um, a certain kind of media. So like, for example, you look at what does it mean when you have certain camera angles or certain um, kinds of lighting or what is the color scheme? Like you, you interpret not just the story of the movies, not just the characters that you see in films, but all the technical formal elements of it has meaning that is part of the film. And the stories that all of those formal elements tell combine with the story that the script is telling in all these interesting ways. And when you start, like as you gain these skills and looking out into the world, you have this ability to decode 
all of this messaging that is happening around you all of the time. And that's a really, really powerful thing to be able to do. In addition to being super satisfying, um, people leave our classes, they go out for coffee or drinks, and they want to keep on talking about the things that they're studying in class because they are the things that they are super excited and thrilled about. So um, it, it's, a, it's a really, really intellectually stimulating um, program of study and a program where there is an incredible intellectual and creative and cultural community where whether you're in the study stream or the production stream or the media art stream, um, you're interacting with people who are building all of these complementary skills, you're making the connections that you're gonna need as you go forward into those, um, those careers in, in, um, in the industry. If you're in, in the study stream, that might be a career in, in uh, working in television or film industries and in programming and production management and um, well, there's there's a whole bunch of uh, careers listed curatorial on the website. Work. What's that? Curatorial work. Curatorial or, work. You could go on to become a critic, scholar, author, professor. <laughs> yeah, you could become a professor. You could become a, a film critic. Um, there's there's all sorts of possibilities. And and again, like just you know, those jobs, those careers are real. They're not just fantasies that only like one out of a thousand people can achieve. Like, it's not like imagining that you want to be a rock star and knowing that, that it's very unrealistic. If you stick to it, if you make the connections, if you build your networks, if you put the work into it, all of these possibilities are very, very real possibilities and they're legitimate real careers. So I know that's important for your parents to know as well. So some of whom may be watching. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, the courses that I teach in the program, like, you know, like, as scholars, we bring our specialties and you know, sometimes we teach the general courses, but we also have our specialized areas. So I have colleagues who specialize in Asian cinema or in feminist cinema or um, in experimental film or, or in, I'm kind of developing a lot of skills in media arts philosophy. And um, that might be something that you didn't even know there was such a thing, but what does it mean to engage in uh, as audience members and as makers in forms of storytelling, storytelling where you're you're immersed into the story itself and you can interact with it as opposed to a form of spectatorship where you're sitting back, you're immersed in a film when you're watching it, but in a different way than when you put a VR headset on. What does that mean for who we are as human beings? What does that mean for how we build the kind of world that we want? How do the stories we tell affect the futures that we create? How do they come from the past and the structures and the different conditions of life that 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 we live in? So my research is is I'm a queer theorist. I'm a critical disability studies scholar. I also work with critical race and decolonial thought, and I'm interested in how people from those communities engage with the various technologies of of new media in particular to tell different kinds of stories. What does that mean? And those are the kinds of questions that I bring to my courses. Like I'll teach a class in queer cinema, for example, which I'm, it's a third year class that I'm teaching this year. Or two years ago, I taught a class called Madness in Cinema, where we looked at a, a lot of different ways of thinking about, about madness and about mental health and about um, sort of political movements, like, like the, the MAD movement, which is like an activist movement of people who have been labeled as having mental health um, types of disabilities. How is how is film participate in a kind of suspension of reality that is that isn't like a a counter rational way of being in the world that's that's immersed in which you enter a state of kind of suspended uh, disassociation where you put the real world on hold to allow yourself to become mesmerized. So those kinds of questions. It's a it's a lot of fun teaching it. Um, it's a lot of fun learning it and. Um, yeah, um, good luck with your decision making and thinking about what you're going to do. Um, but uh, I think that's all I have to say for now. Thanks. Fantastic, Mary. Thank you so much. I'm just going to add on that that um, the um, the BA in Cinema and Media Studies is an entirely grades based um, application, so you do not need a portfolio for um, for CMS. I'm thinking that maybe Patricio and Tayan could kind of tag team together on the media arts. I don't know who would like to go first, but you could. Combine maybe. Sure. Let's just we can talk. both. Yeah, we can both <laughs> uh, unmute. Um, I have some slides which I can show too. So we'll do a bit of that. Um, 
go for it. How much time do we have left? We have until 5.30. I would maybe oh, give it uh, about 5.10, 5.15 for questions. Great. So um, I'm going to present. So when we have to think about media arts, um, I think I think about what my trajectory has been as an artist. Um, I went to university uh, for design and I came out and did uh, graphic design, interactive design, uh, art direction, and then creative direction. I did everything from branding to posters, to commercials, to websites. And throughout the whole time, um, I was doing art. Uh, on the side, much to how um, Manfred explained, you know, you can get your rent paid with being an editor. I was getting my rent paid by being a designer and doing interaction design. And then on the side, I did all my independent uh, projects. And I've been fortunate enough that I can now, I've been able to pivot and become a media artist um, much more than, than a designer. But the when you think about media arts, it's kind of like cinema plus plus it's it's everything else that is about storytelling but also not just storytelling experience so when we talk about the kinds of things that media arts creates experience is a huge part of it where if you're going to wear uh, vr goggles you're going to experience a story in a very real way because it kind of takes over your vision and you're standing up and you're moving around 360 video in the same way. If you're thinking about transmedia where you're uh, seeing parts of a story throughout different platforms, you're experiencing it, experiencing it in ways that are really quite novel. If you're um, walking into a situation, uh, uh, an installation, or by a building where there's a projection, not only are you seeing bits of a story, you're experiencing it. And the kinds of stories that are told or the, or the structures of those stories are really unconventional. They're, they tend not to be from point A to point B, like a beginning, middle, and end, but they're much more challenging. What I have here is a slide of just some of the things that we kind of touch on within the program. And the program is massively flexible and it's massively flexible by design. It has to be flexible in order to be able to prepare you for an ever shifting landscape. So um, Mary was talking about how screen culture is going to be around for a very long time. It has been around for a very long time. And we're seeing that some major parts of screen culture are super resilient within a COVID situation, right? Um, watching on your phone, watching online, um, content uh, being played interactively through games or on mobile devices, or on laptops or in TVs in your living room are how we tell stories, how we share experiences with people. And so when we uh, think about our program, Media Arts, we're thinking about like, how do you um, create worlds for those interactive screens? How do you create sound for that? How do you tell a story that is interactive, that it's not just linear? where you press play and then it ends? How do you um, work with screens so that when you're walking in the street, you see uh, a story and a fragment of a story, but it kind of resonates with you? Those are some of the things that we're, we're, we're doing. Tayan, do you wanna jump in before I go into another slide? <laughs> That's lots of things right there, but we do. <laughs> we are, uh, we're a new program, right? We're only about uh, three and a half years old now. So just to throw in that upcoming, we're developing a curriculum madly as we go. So even just next year, it's not on the, on the, the official website yet, but we have things like podcasting courses coming out, um, virtual uh, cinematography courses, interactive, oh, we already have interactive documentary, but uh, yeah, there, there we go. All these, all these things that we are developing. How to write, 
for games and interactive media, right? So how to think outside of the box, outside of the screen. As we one of, and one of the things that we're doing right now is a master class with uh, an institute in LA um, around the idea of virtual production and virtual cinematography. So we're using game engines in order to create worlds where you can tell stories through those worlds. And game engines are becoming really popular in making movies. So if anybody saw The Mandalorian, the backgrounds were done with a game engine. And so some of the, the game engines that have been used for games that you play have been used for these um, major productions that go on to, uh, I think it was HBO or, yeah, I think it was HBO. Um, and or Amazon. And so within that kind of world, we want you to have experiences with a whole bunch of different technologies and techniques so that when you come out, you're literate, you're um, skilled in a whole a mix of different, uh, of different um, uh, types of uh, activities so that you can plug into this changing landscape. Um, just have a picture of all the faculty. <laughs> I worked really hard on this. So <laughs> I just wanted to show it right there. Um, and these are all the faculty and, uh, and we're growing as the program grows. Um, yeah. I also have a slide with some images of the kinds of things that what media arts looks like, right? So I'm a media artist. So, so like, what is media arts? I know what film is like. I know what making stuff for, for, uh, for TV is like. I know what screenwriting is like, but what is media arts? Well, media arts is taking control of, of screens in Celebration Square in Mississauga. It means doing things like 360 videos where um, you take- We're the, not seeing that screen, Patricio. You're not seeing that screen? We're still on the faculty screen. Oh, sorry. Here we go. I'll stop and then I'll share again. How's that? Mm, black screen. Oh, there we go. Black screen. Okay. <laughs> and so when you think about multi screens, when you think of um, uh, like Celebration Square in Mississauga, can you see that? The font of the mirrors? Yep. Yeah. And that's, that's taking over all of these screens in order to tell a story. So um, that's media art. Media arts is also projection mapping onto 100 year old buildings. So that people can walk it, walk up to it, and experience a story. So there's no words. There's pictures that are telling you something. Other things are doing installations where people are walking up to LED screens where you've created these digital humans that speak a particular truth. Right? 360 videos where you where you use um, drones to take pictures and do footage of around an area. Uh, a natural area and work with First Nations to uh, retell the stories of how um, people have historically used riverways, using cell phones in order to connect with buildings and control the lights on buildings. This for me is media arts. So we, we use some of the language of cinema, some of the language of film, but we're also being really kind of experimental and saying, we're gonna put it in places where people don't expect, so. There you go. Awesome. Yeah, and we're and media arts is also sound, right? We do like a lot of like immersive sound. As I said, podcasting, which is so big now. Learn how to podcast. Um, and so I'm just gonna share my screen because I just wanted to show our new uh, media arts a site, which is called Beta Space. So there, this, so this is our new website that's just currently being worked on, um, but is I think in enough of a, a space <laughs> shape that we can share it uh, now. And so this is like just our, our main splash screen and that's beta space, our logo here. So this is our new Media Arts 411 resource site. So you might wanna check it out just to see, you know, here are some images of faculty work, um, here is uh, BFA, some of the media arts courses here that you can uh, scroll through. I'm scrolling really fast, so you can't really see it, but you can, you know, go there. The fourth year experience where uh, you can choose uh, between 
having a, a placement in industry or in uh, commercial or uh, agencies, that kind of thing. Uh, and then here you can see some of the equipment that we have, right, for first and second years. We have a lot of like, yeah, you know, Zoom recorders. And I come from, a, I'm a, I have a filmmaking background myself. I have an MFA in film production, but also, you know, my PhD like expanded out into all kinds of media. And so in the a third and fourth year, you might be doing things with our motion capture suits or taking out our, you know, our 12K uh, Insta360 Pro, which captures every direction, um, you know, stuff like this. So really expanding out into what, uh, what kinds of things we can do with technology, but also DIY, right? We're all, I'm also really into DIY. Like, so what kinds of things can you do just with yourself and, and maybe making like a viral video or, you know, small things as well, right? That you just wanna uh, put on your own website, which we also um, work, have you work on doing. So not just, a, um, just like a video reel, but like a whole website to put your whole portfolio on. Uh, and then uh, Cinespace, of course, which we've just talked about. Uh, we can uh, do a lot of shoots there. And here is our uh, student showcase. Here's some works from uh, some of our classes here. So you can go there and experience some of this stuff. Um, we also look at animation, 3D, 2D. And these are some great 360 videos from some of our grad students. So I'm going to stop share. And I will also just put the, uh, put that into the chat as well. The, if I can figure out where my chat went. Where'd my chat go? Oh, there it is. All right, so there is the, the site there. That's so great. Thank you so much, Tayan. And I just see that uh, Howard Wiseman, our professor in screenwriting has joined us. So that's fantastic. So in the last few minutes, I'm gonna hand it over to, to Howie. I did wanna say that you're probably getting a sense like where do the boundaries of these things, uh, you know, where, where do they start and where do they stop? I think one of the great strengths and one of the, um, one of the fantastic things about being in the Department of Cinema and Media Arts at York is that um, you run into people who are interested in all of these areas all the time. And thinking about the ways in which they intersect um, is really critical. So if you're a production student, you will take CMS courses, you will work with screenwriting. You might well collaborate with some media arts students. If you come in as a media arts student, um, you will also meet the screenwriters. You will also be in CMS and you probably will find colleagues in production. Um, we hope to, um, by having all of these strengths, um, create an environment where, um, where you can um, do your best work and hang out with very interesting people. So I'm gonna turn it over to, uh, to Professor Wiseman. Uh, we did talk briefly about uh, screenwriting before you were here. So there's been like a little bit, but if you wanted to talk specifically about the application process, that'd probably be like amazing. Okay. Um, hi everyone. Um, sorry, I was, we have a student uh, in India and because of the time zone, I was writing emails madly and I couldn't get to you in time. Um, Happy to be here. I love Tyann, what Tyann was saying. I only wish I had a presentation like that. Um, I do, but um, shall I run through the range of the courses in a kind of precy sense also, Caitlin, or not? I think we wanna leave about 15 minutes for questions. So we okay. really only have about three or four minutes. So I think okay. just um, um, just giving it. an so, overview and especially why, why would people wanna go get into screenwriting and how do they do it? It's the foundation. Uh, the writing we feel is the core of really any film artist, especially in our realm, the, um, the ability to tell a story, which we bring everybody into our 1120 course, uh, which is about storytelling in a very broad perspective. Our feeling is that to learn to tell a story in many ways in different media is really one of the key skills that you will, um, that you will gain with us. In terms of the application, um, I'll quickly talk about that. You have a couple of writing samples that we would like to see. Now, it doesn't have to be a screenplay because we're not assuming that you're writing screenplays in high school. We're not assuming that you're doing that already, though many are. We're looking for just quality of writing. It could be prose, it could be poetry. Uh, it could be a play you wrote, um, but it has to be something you wrote. Uh, and we're used to assessing material. We're just looking for your voice. And then we're looking to try to enhance that voice in our program. 
uh, our job, my job is in a way to help you find your voice and to get out of the way of that voice. And it takes time. This does not happen instantly. Um, so that the process is quite simple. I believe we need two writing samples. And then we have, uh, we rank the writing and then we come back to you for our short list uh, and we give you three images. And we ask you to write a little piece in, I think we give you an hour um, to write a piece in relation to one of the three images. And then we look at that because we wanna see how you work in the moment versus when you're working uh, with a lot of time to rewrite. So that's our process. It's very simple. I may have left something out, but I really wanna talk a little bit about the writing itself, what we do. Um, and be, feel free to ask questions. First year, we're talking about story in general and we're taking in and working with many students from all over the department and some from the rest of the faculty. In second year, the screenwriting majors are streamed into one class, but you're collaborating across all of second year where we're doing half the scripts are coming from second year screenwriting majors and half from production majors to create 14 productions. So you would work on those scripts in second year. It's very collaborative because directors will find you and we have a pitch process where you get a chance to pitch your project to all of the production students, approximately 50 or 60 students altogether. Uh, that's second year where we start to create uh, relationships. In third year, we have um, two different streams, both for screenwriting majors, but other people can take the courses. One is feature film, which I'm teaching this year, writing a feature film story in about 30 pages prose. We work all year on creating that story. Um, in fourth year, we follow up with writing the screenplay. And in television, we take, in third year, we create uh, shows together, shows we call spec shows, which means you would write an episode of an HBO show or a, a broadcast, uh, broadcast television show. And in your fourth year follow-up course, you would create your own series, a Bible, which means the description of the whole world um, and the pilot episode. So I've just run through everything very quickly, but this is the essence of what we do. And we're always collaborating with production so that writers are working with directors and we try to create those relationships. That's great, Howie. There's a question for you in the chat. Any tips for writing samples? Anything to put me at an advantage? Oh. Um, no. <laughs> no, it's just your own voice. It's really what you want to write about that to me is, is interesting. It's, oh, well, there's a student I know. Uh, hi. Uh, it's just really what you want to write about, what speaks to you. That will speak to us. So no, I don't have any tips. Okay. Turning it back fair? over to you then, Laura. Yep, no, that's great. Okay, wonderful. That, uh, that was really great. I loved hearing from all of the faculty members for the different areas. So you may have noticed we've promoted yet another person, our special guest, Ryan. Ryan is a third year production student, right, Ryan? Yeah. And uh, he will be hosting tomorrow's Instagram Live if you do tune into that. I'm going to start with a question for Ryan. This was sent ahead of time. Um, obviously, we all hope that next year is normal. But uh, Ryan, would you mind talking a little bit about how you've uh, been managing the, the group work of being a cinema student while, uh, while COVID is happening? First off, can you hear me? Is yes. everything good? Okay, good, perfect. Um, it's definitely different than previous years for obvious reasons, but I think um, everyone has that like passion and drive that really makes them want to adapt to it. And I think for the most part, a lot of the students and the faculty have adapted very well and very quickly. So the way things are sort of working now, a lot of like production meetings are being done via Zoom. Any in-person production meetings, um, I'm in, so I made, I'm a production major and I'm, I specialize in fiction. So our fiction class is in person, but it's socially distanced. Everyone wears masks, it's very safe. Um, anything else will be done over Zoom. And it is very effective. Everyone has a cell phone now. So everyone's at like a phone call away. Um, other than every production meeting not taking place in person, for the most part, it's relatively the same. Do any of our faculty members wanna comment on moving virtually for, for teaching? Yeah, Mary. Um, I haven't started this yet, but I'm really excited about my classes next semester because I'm gonna, I plan to teach them in a virtual world platform. 
Um, so I'm going to be teaching in Second Life. I at least two out of my three classes will be in Second Life, possibly all three. I'm thinking a queer cinema is the one I'm still on the on the ledge about. Um, but you know, these are these are platforms where you create an avatar and then you go into a, a virtual space. And in my one of my classes, we're going to be creating that space as part of the class, like creating the environment, building it. The other one is a theater class because um, I do a little bit of teaching in theater as well. That's on staging the body um, in public culture is the way the class is it's normally about staging the body in, in live performance, but we're going to do staging the body in digital performance and sta staging the avatar body. So um, it's, I'm super excited about it. And I think it's going to be really nice. Um, you know, lots of classes are taking place on the Zoom platform and I imagine by January people will be getting a little tired of that. So I'm, I'm hoping this will be a great refreshing and fun way to kind of use COVID as a way of pushing the boundaries on what, on what we're doing and how we're, how we're teaching. And I think it's a very legitimate question to ask, um, why are you offering a production program if we can't do productions as incoming students? And the answer is you can. There are models. You can use a cell phone. You can use a very smart edition microphone which produces this beautiful sound. A number of years ago I did a production for the National Film Board working with people with very little agency, homeless people. And after a while making a few of those short films, I said, here, here's the camera. I gave them a cell phone and they produce beautiful work all by themselves. It's not about the pristine quality of, of uh, the resolution of the image or the sound quality. It's about speaking truth and, and being real and being human. And you can do that any, under any circumstances. And I think that limitation creates beauty and creates opportunity. And that's how you discover what's in you is to say, okay, this is the borders, the limitations. I am in this place. These are the, the, the orientations I can go with and let's create something. And I think it just is one COVID should be seen as an opportunity rather than just a limitation. The other thing I'll just add to that, I, I love what you just said there, Manfred, is also um, this is a great time to be uh, deciding to uh, go to cinema and media arts and study um, because the industry is changing and you will find out on the ground floor how that industry is changing and be prepared for this. What does a socially distant film set look like? Um, what does producing look like in the context of COVID? Um, these are, you know, we, we don't know um, how things are going to um, change over the next couple of years or whether they will return to what we used to know or whether there are now new changes that are, aren't entirely bad that are just going to change maybe virtual production will be um that will just be highlighted uh, around how important that can be for the industry in any case i think it's i think it's important to think about this as an exciting time that um that uh, as much as there are limitations yeah there there, are, there is beauty in them and there, there's incredible relevance in being part of a film school right now um, mm -hmm. and to be part of that uh, conversation on the ground floor about what this is going to mean for cinema and for media uh, could i add there's also trends translatable skills, for example, what Manfred is talking about, in screenwriting, not only can you learn to tell stories for the screen, but in learning structure and learning to find your voice and what you're called to write, you're also gonna be able to transfer that. And that transference could take you to game, to writing games. It could take you to writing dramatic podcasts, which is exactly in the zone uh, for today. And also it's, uh, I'm drawn to podcasts and I came from uh, one of my backgrounds is radio. So we have, we are a lot more um, flexible than it might seem, even though we have our siloed areas. We're aiming for the same thing, which is communication. Okay, uh, we are getting a few questions more about the evaluation and portfolio. So one of them, somebody asked if it was open yet. It is not, um, because we're not on campus this year. We've had to pivot a few things, so we're still working on it. Uh, I'm hoping probably next week. But what will happen if you have applied, you'll get a welcome email when it's ready. If you haven't applied, you can apply, you get your welcome email, you'll go into the system, you'll do your questionnaire, you'll upload your portfolio. And the deadline for that is February 3rd. Media arts and cinema and media studies do not require any evaluation as Caitlin mentioned before. This is for screenwriting and production. And we do have a couple of questions for both screenwriting and production about 
what are you looking for in the portfolio? I know you guys touched on it a little bit, um, but people are asking if there are any examples or any more information um, that you could give about that. I would suggest to start with what turned you on to filmmaking. Like I remember when I was 15, an impressionable kid in Hamburg, Germany, I sat down for this obscure 45 minute black and white film from this British guy. I had no idea what I was watching. And by the end of it, the curtain came up and I was a different person. And I wanted to know how the construction of images and sounds and its, its assembly would have such an impact on me. So I decided to study film. If you start from that point of view saying, why am I here? Why am I writing this application? Why do I have to do this? You, you start from a place of authenticity and then you bring in what films moved you. And then you, the next step is to say, if I had the means of production, what film would I make? And that's all you need to do is base your, base your, your motivation in, 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 in a true moment and write a, a documentary with this, which is dramatic or a fictional story, which is real. Howard, did you have anything else to add or do you feel like you've said everything you need to about the portfolio? Manfred expressed it very well. Okay. I mean, you can sometimes tell if you're just trying to guess what people want. So I, I exactly very much at point. Yeah, you can that's kind the of only see thing I might have added is you do not have to try to please a professor. You yeah. need to go in to find what you need to express, what are you called to write, and how to stay truthful about it. Ryan, do you have any advice as somebody who went through the process somewhat recently? Um, my advice would be. Um, prove your passion really I think if you if you show um, the faculty and anyone else looking at the portfolio that you really want to be here you show that you have a passion for not only filmmaking film in general Canadian film and you you show that you want to be here that's really great and that's something that really sets you apart great um, there was a lot of talk about how the different programs sort of intermingle a little bit and they have similar goals and values and things like that. Somebody had asked um, if they had interest in more than one area, how would you suggest that they choose a program? So for example, the, the person who wrote in asked about, am I a media art student or am I a production student? How do, how do students decide? Any advice? It's a really tricky one because as much as theoretically there's so much overlap, part of the practical constraint is how many cameras do we have for film production? Uh, how many 360 or how many VR setups do we have for media art? So um, even if it were, you know, it's theoretically possible, I would love it if more filmmakers would come over to media art sometimes and all the screenwriters could come and everybody interested could take a third year editing course. Um, the reality is that it is important to choose your, um, your area well because it will limit the kind of of courses you can take and mostly that is because we have limited uh, we've got finite faculty and um, and material resources um, that said at the at the early years they're actually you know as how we were saying like everybody takes the intro to screenwriting or has it has in the past um, um, there are opportunities um, for people to um, to take some of the classes in media arts for example um, if you want to take uh, the upper year film production courses, the only pathway is going to be um, the application to film production because we just do not have spaces, even if you have that particular talent or developing that skill set. Uh, media arts is one of the one of the reasons um, um, there are two reasons why media arts emerges uh, three or four years ago when we started thinking about it five or six um, is in part to the pressures of, of uh, the film production program and also to organic interests as things are changing um, I think it's a very good spot for many people to think of as a first choice um, as a new program we don't have the same uh, portfolio review requirement um, but if you go that route, you won't be in the traditional courses. Um, so you will not be doing film production. Um, this is something where you might want to reach out to individual faculty and think about that. If you go the screenwriting route, uh, there are a lot of courses you can take in, in combination and you're going to meet uh, production students, but you won't be able to take, you won't be able to be a director of a fourth year film. 
um, that ship has sailed uh, at, in the context of your undergraduate degree. Um, so these are these are difficult choices. I, I still think there's something incredibly uh, vibrant. Also, I loved how everybody talking about their areas, like their area is kind of the best area. <laughs> I love the enthusiasm of the faculty. Um, and I, I also, I do think that we are on the same page about um, building um, flexible and imaginative artists. Um, you will get to know people from outside of your stream. Um, so although it's a very real thing that there will be limitations on your courses, depending on your point of entry, um, it's not true that you will not have the opportunity uh, maybe to take an occasional course or certainly to know uh, the people in your cohort. Um, but um, it's a tricky decision. So, but maybe back to Manfred's point, like think about who you are, um, think about um, you know where you imagine yourself in 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 five or ten years. Uh, but also know that um, some of these pathways, you know, coming into a department like ours, people sometimes come in as writers and then they end up they are directing a feature film. Um, people come in through media arts and they end up you know working in a writer's room. Um, you know, their crossovers are are entirely possible. So I think it's a good foundation for your bachelor's degree, no matter what. Um, but yeah, tough choice. Point. Don't forget comedy. That counts. <laughs> comedy is allowed. Oh, I just want to add too. just, um, it seems like a really big decision and momentous that like, oh, I'm going to decide production or screenwriting or media arts or, but um, you have a whole lifetime ahead of you. And like Tyann talked about, how she started out as a BFA student and now she's you know teaching in media arts and she's a media artist and so like the decisions you make now aren't going to lock you into a fixed pathway for the rest of your life either you continue to learn and grow beyond what you study in your specific undergraduate degree so it's not like you know it's not that agonizing like you're not going to make the wrong choice like whatever choice you're going to make, it's going to be the right choice and you throw yourself into it. And if you're interested in something beyond that, well, you can take classes over at the Liaison for Independent Filmmakers or Trinity Square Video or go on and do a master's degree in which you incorporate this other direction that you didn't get to do in your undergrad. So lots of opportunities. There's a question I see about the difference between a BFA and BA. You want to take that on? <laughs> Uh, the BFA is a Bachelor in Fine Arts. The BA is a Bachelor in Ar Bachelor of Arts. Just at the base level, that's the difference. BFAs, we tend to talk about them being more hands-on. You're creating, you're making, and the BAs are more traditional university that you think of, of the, the history, the theory, the study, that sort of thing. I don't know if Mary wants to add anything to that, being our BA faculty member representative. Yeah, well, basically with the BA, BFA, you are doing some kind of studio practice, whether filmmaking or in the visual arts program or dance, you are, you are making art mm -hmm. of some form. With the, with, the, with the BA, you are studying art. You are learning about, you're writing about it. You are analyzing it. You are, so, so you're, you're a scholar in a BA and you're an artist in the MFA. Okay, unfortunately we are out of time. Um, Ryan, can you give a quick plug for tomorrow? Can you confirm the timing of your Instagram live? Yes, it is 5.30. Okay, so at York UAMPD, if you wanna ask Ryan any questions, I think you'll have a buddy with him as well. Yeah. Um, so you can learn more about the program or student life or anything like that. Um, I wanna thank all of our faculty members so much. I've loved having you all here. It's uh, been a great learning experience. And if you didn't get your question answered, please email us ampd at yorku.ca. And uh, if you want to check out Cine Siege um, or York Flicks, you can do so on our website as well. So thank you so much to everybody for coming today. <laughs>